Welcome back, everyone. It's uh, Neem Mutator. I'm bringing you Game 3 in the match between Thor and Paris. It is Myth Kickballers, Week 7. And, yeah, you know what? I'm going to leave that chat up. I don't think I did that in the previous game. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, uh, I want to draw attention to the fact that in the first two games, I actually didn't have any losses. I had... Uh, I had some kills in the first game, zero kills in the second game because all I had was a scouting goal. But uh, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if that trend continues in excuse me in the rest of these games. All right. So it seems like uh, Paris says he's playing with a concussion and he's on the phone. Blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this map. Care Kadarn, something like that is going to be capture the flag so that's going to be interesting capture the flag is actually uh, pretty fun uh, a lot of the time it's going to be a dark map so I don't know if there's going to be yeah I don't think there's giants or anything like that so that makes it a little bit more interesting although there there is seems to be a plethora of uh, fetch <clears throat> I don't know is Paris is this his trade nope there we go there we go yeah he's going to max out those fetch I was I was wondering about that. I was like, that's not that doesn't seem like a winnable trade. <laughs> not you know just because the fetch are uh, are are central to most trades, they play they play a huge role in in drawing out the win basically because they're they do so much damage over time. They have very high capacity, high potential for dealing damage. That's going to be like the main artillery unit of this force. I'm not sure if Thor got any dwarves or anything. Nope. Couple of whites. He also got max fetch. And I think maybe these trades are pretty similar in in a lot of ways. Uh let's take a look here. Looks like Thor might have a slight solace advantage. And beyond that, I mean Thrall looked similar. Um <clears throat> okay so Paris actually took a a few more of these Stygian knights. Uh, it looks like there's a couple of these Heron healers for Thor, and maybe three instead of two Game for Paris. On. So that's another way. A couple of these uh, brigands, brigand commanders, bring commando. Oh, that's weird. I have never seen those before. And you know, a uh, significant, a sizable spider flank of of some sort. Looks like here's one for Valky. He's going to be in control of that. Um, and this one's going to be Renwood. And yeah, so I'm like, I think I need one because I think I only had like three Solus or something. Yeah, these three here maybe. So I was like, I should probably, I think I, I think I want maybe one more. <laughs> and Paris is like, nope. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so what? how I see this happening is both players or both teams going to be basically moving across the map, meeting, meeting each other in the middle since this is kind of the halfway point. Um, and this is the path, uh, the fastest path between these two points here is through the middle. So I think they're going to meet each other in this, uh, this center area and maybe send units around to scout the sides, see if they're going there or flank they might actually move into the backfield and attempt to do some damage but yeah here's a scout although yeah that's a scout there Mercadon sending that out here's a scout here that's a little bit more sizable than a scout spider flank on the side and then of course some stuff happening in the middle looks like these fetch are gonna may maybe meet here and what the solace are gonna do is both deal with each other so the Solus flanks are going to be trying to focus each other down, but also trying to get some nice shots off on these fetch. But you have to balance it out because you don't want to um, you don't want to spend your time trying to hit fetch and not being able to hit them while getting worked on from the Solus. So there needs to be like a uh, a balance between what it is that you do with the Solus. So Solus are very important. Fetch are very important also. Um, but that kind of goes without saying. So there's this white trying to move in. He is going to get focused down though. Renwood does have that spider flank. 
so he might be moving around with that. Um, I don't know. He maybe he could take this out. I don't know. He he would need to be very careful. I don't know if he can actually take that that out with those stigens. Uh, looks like arsenic has some spiders as well. But this is where most of the action is as of right now. A couple of these stigens. Stigens happen to be a little bit resistant to. Uh, to the lightning from the fetch. So five fetch remaining, and here's what? Six or seven? Seven. Looks like one of them got focused down there by some of these digit or some of these soulless. Can't talk. Ooh, nice shot there by Mercadon, taking out a lot of those soulless. That actually helped a lot. If we can retain a soulless advantage, that would be very worthwhile. Then we're gonna move in here. He is gonna lose that. And uh, we do, we did manage to take this hill area, so that's pretty cool. I tried to sneak around the hill and maybe get something, something like a surround to try to ease the pressure on our mid. And all of a sudden, the tables have turned, and we're basically rocking it now. We have a solus, a pretty huge solus advantage, at least on that side. These solus are basically worthless. Arsenic, I don't know what he's doing. I guess he's trying to defend against these spiders or something. But uh, we're basically going to be able to focus down these... Those fetch, and that one goes down. There's one left, and these spiders are going to try to move in and maybe do something, but uh, they need to be careful. As that Heron healer is going to rack up a lot of kills, basically, from doing that. But that fetch ends up going down, and all of a sudden we're looking pretty good. That is a significant Solus Force. It is 40, roughly 40, 60 percentage wise at this point. Um, these spiders are going to scout out this flag, but there are a lot of thralls, so that's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, even if with all these spiders, I'm not sure if it can happen. Maybe with these guys too? I'm, I don't really know about that. Um, so what happened now was I was like, okay, let's just go around these guys straight to the flag. So I think that's what a lot of us are going to do, is just kind of move straight up into this flag area and try to work on this defense here. Mercadon notices that they're sending more to our flag. Demolition's Heron he uh, Healer trying to run interference is going to get taken out here, though, I think. Actually, is pretty freaking good. I didn't notice that. But, uh, yeah, his days are numbered. He's not going to be able to do a whole lot. He doesn't have any heals left, and right. he's very low on health. And this flag gets flag contested, contested, but spiders not very good flag against contested. thralls. So, you know, losing a couple spiders, not a, really a big deal. That's a lot of thrall. So I think if the thrall, maybe if the thrall focus on the spiders at first, then focus down on these guys. I'm not really sure. How would you, d how would you do this if you were the thrall? Flag what would contested. your priority be? I mean, obviously it depends on, like, who rushes in at one time and whatnot, but what if everybody came in came at you at the same time. Looks like these guys, though, are going Black to run in <coughs> and maybe uh, offset whatever advantage Thor's team might have with these guys here. Looks like on our flag, we got fetch, so good game Thrall. There's no way they're going to be able to survive this onslaught. And uh, these guys here are kind of useless. Sam the Butcher's uh, Solus, not in a very good spot. He's basically halfway between both flags. And not really in a uh, flag looks like all of those thrall were taken out but uh, there are there are a lot of these uh, these melee here Team so they are going to basically clean up what was left so that was a good call on uh, Paris's part sending these guys back home to defend so I think uh, I think that was a good call uh, basically allowing the rest of these fetch to move in and basically clean up the flag was a uh, was enough you didn't need to send everybody for that and uh, Paris' team going to win game number three, um, and they're up 2-1 in this match. So it looks like uh, Mercuron actually getting a lot of damage. I think he had maybe half of the fetch. Uh, he had a number of fetch, so that's probably where a lot of that damage came from. Arsenic actually getting a lot of kills. I think he had, uh, he had some spiders and some soulless, and I'm not sure what else. Looks like he had 19 losses. I, I would say most of that is from... His spiders and solace, but uh, 17 kills is nothing to scoff at. That that is a uh, pretty significant 
even though it's not as much as his 19 losses. Um, I'd say uh, everyone on our team played fairly well. Let's take a look at, uh, well, actually, Drowned didn't do a whole lot. I didn't see what he had, though. But everyone else did okay. Although uh, Renwood did have four kills to ten losses, although a lot of those were spiders. He did get okay damage. I mean, that's not very high, but that's not too bad either. Um, yeah, it looks like Thor didn't actually control much at all. Only three units the entire duration of the game. And he didn't actually manage to get any damage at all. Uh, looks like Demolition managed, he, he actually squeaked by with 89 damage uh, past Evil Jake, who had 74. And uh, Rauer actually posted up some pretty good numbers as well, 11 kills, 7 losses. But uh, yeah, I'm, that's curious that Thor didn't control very much that game. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be it for game number 3, and uh, we'll see you in game number 4. Game over.